الأساسية فهم صراحة بيعانوا بيعانوا جدا. You asked me about the ability of the healthcare system to deal with it. People are tired. We, our team has been doing this for five days. We're exhausted. I can't imagine what the Gazan team, who's been here for 162 days doing this 24-7, 162 days without resources, is dealing with. You asked me whether they had the resources to, to deal with these cases. No. And at least four Palestinians were killed in an Israeli airstrike that hit Gaza, southernmost city of Rafah, overnight on Tuesday. The bodies were taken to the Abu Yusuf Al Najjar Hospital, where they were counted. The blast flattened a residential building in Rafah, and residents say that more than 10 people remain trapped under the rubble. In the morning after the strike, dozens of Palestinians were seen sifting through the rubble of the pancake building to look for survivors. The latest fatal strike comes amid Israeli threats of a ground assault into Rafah, the area where most of Gaza's Palestinians have been displaced to. And dozens have gathered in South Lebanon on Wednesday to mourn seven paramedics who were killed in an Israeli airstrike. The strike took place uh, in the village of Hebariye just one day after the Israeli military and Lebanon's Hezbollah group exchanged attacks along the Lebanon-Israel border. This has raised concerns of further escalation along the frontier that has been active in the past five months of the Israel-Hamas war. According to the Lebanese Ambulance Association, the airstrike after midnight on Tuesday hit an office of the Islamic Emergency and Relief Corps. It was one of the deadliest single attacks since violence erupted along the border. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل منا هؤلاء ما كنت أتمنى أبدا أن أكون في هذا الموقف ولدي في لدة كبدي تقبله الله أولاده إخواني أيضا في لدة أكبالي تقبلهم الله لكن لن نقف عاجزين سننتقم the Paramedics Association listed the names of the seven volunteers who were killed in the airstrike and said that it was a flagrant violation of humanitarian work. The Israeli military said it struck a military building in Hebarie and killed a member of Lebanon's Sunni Muslim Al Jama'a Al Islamia or the Islamic group along with several other militants. إلى كل اللبنانيين بدون استثناء من كان وهي التي توجد وهي التي اليوم تلعب دور الصدر وتتلقى السهام عن كل الوطن تقول لكل الوطن من كان لم يستطيع أن يكون مع الهبري فلا يكون خنجرا في ظهرها من لم يستطيع أن يكون مع الهبري عليه أن يكون مع لبنان مع كل الوطن على كل اللبنانيين دون استثناء. Mediators hope to prevent Hezbollah Israel being largely confined to area along the Lebanon-Israel border. International mediators are now scrambling to prevent an all-out war between Hezbollah and Israel. Now let's see if delve deeper into the story. So an Israel airstrike on a paramedic center has killed seven people early Wednesday and triggered a rocket attack from Lebanon. They killed one person in northern Israel. The airstrike on the village of Hebarie came after a day of airstrikes and rocket attacks between Israel's military and Lebanon's Hezbollah group along the Lebanon-Israel border. It raises concerns of further escalation along the frontier that has been active for the past five months. According to the Lebanese Ambulance Association, the airstrike that occurred 
after midnight Tuesday hit an office of the Islamic Emergency and Relief Corps. The strikes was one of the deadliest single attacks since violence erupted along the Lebanon-Israel border more than five months ago. Rescue services in Israel said that one person was killed and two others lightly injured in the Hezbollah rocket attack. The man was killed when the rocket sparked a fire in an industrial park in Kiryat Shmona. According to the Israeli military, around 30 rockets were launched from Lebanon towards northern Israel on Wednesday morning. One man who was lightly injured in the strike found paramedics who arrived on the scene and directed them towards his co-worker who was unconscious. طبيعة الحال العكس منطقة هادي تعتبر منطقة أمني وأبناء المنطقة العرقوب نزحوا عليها وإذا كان يصير في قصف كان يصير في على الأطراف وهي بلدة أطراف واسعة ولكن داخل البلدة ما صار هيدا أول استهداف بيصير مباشر لأبناء وللأسف يعني صار استهداف على جهاز طبي وهذا يعني سابقة متعودين عليها للأسف يعني عند الإجرام الإسرائيلي and uh, now we move on to the United States of America, where the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, early on Tuesday has significantly affected traffic in the region and cut off a main access road to, to and out of the port city. Authorities believe that the disaster will worsen congestions around Baltimore's two harbor tunnels and westbound Interstate 695 since many individuals are now forced to look for alternate routes. Meanwhile, maritime traffic to and from the Baltimore port has been suspended indefinitely. The collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge is diverting traffic and shipping around one of America's busiest ports on the East Coast. Transportation experts believe that the disaster will worsen congestion around Baltimore's two harbor tunnels and westbound Interstate 695 as drivers seek alternate routes. Those who travel to and from the north as well as south may take the Fort McHenry Tunnel or Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. However, commercial vehicles carrying materials that are prohibited in the tunnel crossings should plan on using the Baltimore Beltway. Drivers have also been told to prepare for extra commuting time until further notice. Meanwhile, maritime traffic to and from the port of Baltimore has been suspended indefinitely. This decision was made after a cargo ship lost power and plowed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse on Tuesday. Video shot by a helicopter pilot hours after the bridge collapsed shows a group of cargo ships by the William Preston Lane Jr. Memorial Bay Bridge, which is near the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. Meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said it was too soon to give a time frame to clear the channel, which measures 115 meters deep. A cargo ship lost power and rammed into a major bridge in Baltimore on Tuesday. It destroyed the structure in a matter of seconds and plunged it to the river in a terrifying collapse that could disrupt the vital shipping port for months. Six people were missing and are presumed dead. The ship's crew issued a mayday moments before the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed, which enabled authorities to limit traffic on the span. The vessel struck one of the bridge's supports, causing the structure to collapse. A section of the span also came to rest on the bow of the ship, which caught fire. The collision happened at midnight, long before the busy morning commute on the bridge that stretches 2.6 kilometers and was used by 12 million vehicles last year. Another story from Indonesia. The Indonesian Attorney General's Office has named Harvey Muiz, an entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur, I mean, and husband of an Indonesian celebrity as a suspect in the PT Timah TBK corruption case on Wednesday. Muiz allegedly lobbied several shelter companies in the operational area of PT Timah to accommodate illegal tin mining activities. He also requested them to set aside profits under the guise of corporate social funds. Muiz was wearing a pink vest when he was secured by prosecutors of the Special Crime Directorate under the Supreme Court on Wednesday. 
He was arrested as prosecutors found sufficient preliminary evidence to name him as a suspect in an alleged thin graft case that took place within the operational area of PT Timah TBK. Following further examination, authorities found that Moes lobbied smelter companies within the PT Tima job site to accommodate illegal mining under the guise of heavy equipment rental. After securing the contract, Moes asked the smelter companies to set aside some of their profits under the pretense of company social funds. Tim penyidik pejabat bidang tindak pidana khusus telah memanggil enam orang saksi. Dalam kasus tata kelola komoditi eh, timah di wilayah UP PT Timah, di mana satu dari enam orang saksi tersebut setelah dilakukan pemeriksaan secara intensif, tim penyidik memandang telah cukup alat bukti sehingga yang bersangkutan kita tingkatkan statusnya sebagai tersangka yaitu saudara HM selaku e, perpanjangan tangan dari PT RPT. Maka selanjutnya saudara tersangka HM ini meminta para pihak smelter untuk menyisihkan sebagian dari keuntungannya diserahkan kepada yang bersangkutan dengan cover pembayaran dana CSR yang dikirim para pengusaha smelter ini kepada HM melalui PT QS QSI E yang difasilitasi oleh tersangka HLN Previously the Attorney General's office also named Crazy Rich Helena Lim as suspect in this case Lim was the 15th suspect in the case, followed by Muiz. As a result of the alleged actions, they was immediately detained at the Attorney General's prison in Salemba. Meanwhile, the Attorney General's office is cooperating with the Financial and Development Supervisory Agency to investigate Muiz's assets and calculate the country's losses from this case. So as mentioned before, apparently Harfi Muiz uh, is the 16th suspect that has been detained. So um, along with the other 15 uh, from uh, various uh, places and also uh, various companies, including the CEO of PT Timah TBK uh, uh, the year of 2016 to 2021, Mukhtar Riza Pahlevi Tabrani. Mm. So, um, what is actually uh, uh, the, the, the premise that has uh, brought them into the detainment is uh, one of them is being what mentioned before, they actually pursuing, uh, uh, persuading mm -hmm. uh, those smelter companies to uh, set aside some of the funds for the uh, uh, CSR uh, purpose. Yeah. But on the other hand, they put their money for their personal business uh, uh, merger uh, between Helena Lim and also Harfi Muiz in uh, the form of Money Changer Company. Oh. So that is actually how, how the silver lining is between Helena Lim and Harfi Muiz indirectly. Oh, certainly very interesting. Yes, and we will look on the updates on this case. Uh, so you better subscribe to our uh, socials on our Instagram and also other social media for the latest updates. And we are going for a break. And after this, we'll be back with some more updates from Southeast Asia and also around the world. Yes, and later during the hour, I will bring you the latest from the world of business. Yes, and I have sports updates. Stay tuned with us right here on the 3R News Show on C Today. City Today Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business. Only on City Today, Today Business. business.
China has been racing against time for rescue and disaster relief work after a landslide on Monday struck a mountainous village in southwest China's Yunnan province. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself, along with my colleagues, will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well, and your latest viral news as well. Welcome back to the our new show with SNC today. Now, as we know, Indonesia is committed to maintain world peace through several measures. And that includes deploying a contingent from the country, namely the contingent Garuda. Among the locations where the contingent, uh, contingent deployed, other than Lebanon, we've had uh, the honor to get in touch last week. Yes. Is also South Africa. And today we will know more uh, on the Indonesian contingent in Lebanon. In South Africa, pardon me, yes. uh, with a commander of the Indo RDB 39E Monusco Task Force, Colonel Made Sandi Augusto. Good day, Colonel Sandi, or good morning, uh, uh, according to your time there. Okay, uh, good day. Good morning, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yes, we hear <laughs> you morning, clearly. Yeah. All right, so, Colonel. Uh, for us who are not familiar with uh, the, the, the topic, what are the primary objectives and challenges of the mission in Congo? Uh, okay, uh, first of all, I would like to say hello to all the Indonesian uh, viewers and also convey my uh, best regards to all the leadership of Indonesian Armed Forces, including all the uh, stakeholders, Indonesian soldiers, family, and all Indonesian uh, so, the uh, primary objective and challenges of RDB of Monusco in this region yeah. our contingent is to provide an honor in the recent military unit that have a important uh, in the world of, of peacekeeping a mission. Some of the main tasks that we carry out based on the mandate, including the protection of the civilian under the threat of physical uh, violence and then also in all the mobilization, reintegration and also stabilization and also we have to support the security sector. So for the achieving this uh, mandate, our country generalized that uh, it's through uh, routine and also the special operation carried out uh, by our uh, uh, country. Just like uh, routine patrols yeah, and also 
uh, so uh, operation just like uh, range patrol, long range mission in our area of responsibility, and also another operation just like a uh, mobile base static combat deployment. So of course, in conducting all of our assignment, must face different challenges based on the situation and condition in our area. Mm. For example, the locals in various tribes. Mm -hmm. So they are very easy, some of the locals, very easy uh, to be provoked by uh, small and slightest info. And again, sometimes they, they make a conflict each other. Mm. And sometimes they even dare So the anti monusco behavior. This is one of our challenges. And another one, the local security force, you still has a mention of in terms of city, the number, the capability, and sometimes worsening the situation on the ground. So we have to be aware about the situation. And also people who are easily provoked, just like I mentioned before. Yeah. And about the situation of uh, the area, mm -hmm. some areas are damaged, especially after the rain. So it's very difficult to approach, to reach uh, some areas of our operation uh, by our armor vehicles so that's why to go by foot but again because of the of the vulnerabilities so because there's so many of our group there they take ambush so we have to take care about that and uh, one more Maria is still in uh, our mission of area due to uh, the situation and condition uh, in the region of or uh, some of the challenges uh, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, challenges for the United Nations for the, the well, Colonel Sandy, we've heard that your particular um, task force has, you know, been increasing numbers in female uh, peacekeepers. So can you talk to us about the roles that the female peace uh, peacekeepers in the mission have in regards to this area? Yeah, we have, we have. Uh, even just uh, personnel, actually our female uh, uh, of Indo RBB of Manusco, we have uh, 24 personnel of uh, female soldiers. Uh, total from three benches of uh, Indonesian Army, Indonesian Navy, and also uh, Indonesian Air Force. And consists of three officers, uh, two uh, consists of two doctors, one uh, female engagement mm -hmm. team leader, and also 21 of uh, uh, NGO. So, again, they're the only person of civilian. They also carry uh, all the uh, uh, just, uh, patrol in our area of our uh, city. Also, they conduct guard of the uh, prison post and also the patrols in area and uh, main gate civic activities because we have, have to make uh, interaction with local leaders mm -hmm. first with people, especially uh, uh, women and also the, and also in uh, some of uh, uh, medical that they have some mm -hmm. all the uh, and they also and sometimes to introduce people uh, the hot there are some of the countries as a uh, country so they, they have to to introduce by, by a good share, establishing population Area. And uh, for being a female peacekeeper is uh, increasingly nice in this field of uh, yeah. uh, can be humbler. Uh, approaches for the with, uh, with uh, men because especially they have to build the community uh, for women and children. They are also more comfortable with uh, fellow women and also. So a better able to say what is happening and what they I think is good uh, for uh, 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 the locals, especially women and uh, children. I see. Uh, mm. Improve more effective role in this. It's a very important uh, the role of uh, female, female, female soldiers. Well, that's certainly interesting to know that. Yeah, they, um...
uh, yeah. not only in a, in a peacekeeping mm -hmm. uh, area, but also in, in other area where Indonesian soldiers can take part. Even us uh, took part in that too. And also probably uh, one last question uh, before we say goodbye to Kono. Uh, can you highlight some accomplishments mm -hmm. or milestones that has been achieved by the Indo-RDB-39E contingent within the MONUSCO mission in Congo and also their collaboration with other stakeholders? Thank you. Uh, uh, so it's one of the United Nations buildings, uh, unlike the, the traditional peace mission that primarily focused. We have only military, but also all sides the the comprehensive addressing the civilian and humanitarian needs as well as the so some uh, case we have to deal with of this and, and regional community engagement. So, Monusco give a valuable reason to the critical uh, role of communication about this. And we have to, the Indo RDB uh, have to be aware about this. What well, We would like uh, uh, some uh, example that about the conflict of inter tribal uh, in, in our area. So, to do kind of a mediation to, to make some of the, the tribe become a good information, good relation. Uh, so this is uh, a very, uh, a very common uh, mission, very challenging mission. So at the time, in the uh, arrived with the still tense, but basically see in this is a uh, local school if they have to, to, to be uh, good with them, to make a good connection with, and then, uh, we have to we have to be aware about the situation, about the situation of the area, the experience, along with the money other encounter by personnel. I like the importance of the strong communications of skills. So this is, I'd like to show you one uh, example that uh, uh, in in one village that time uh, when we attack more than. One hundred, one hundred there from around the mm -hmm. they, to, We have to take care of them to, to protect them. Sometimes we have to be aware that the role, uh, the role we cannot, we cannot keep them, uh, hold them uh, just like, uh, just like an easy thing, an easy way. No, this is the role. But again, the decision is very important. The last decision, and the last decision is about, about the end of. The time I, I ordered my to hold at the camp mm -hmm. on uh, some injury. It's very important decision, the decision to protect all the civilians. So we have to we have to guarantee to ensure the freedom of, of the movement. It's very important. This is the, the mentors of the UN receivers around the world. The freedom of, of the or all the, the what, Colonel Sandy, that looks like, you know, you have achieved a lot because we've heard that, you know, the peacekeeping mission for this particular attack force is coming to an end, it's almost complete. What moments do the soldier miss during Ramadan month from home? So, and how is Ramadan being cel celebrated in Congo so far? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as, as we know, that, uh, Ramadan is... Uh, Ramadan is the most uh, with uh, man by all the Muslims around the world, and the man of Ramadan uh, uh, important meanings in Islamic teachings, the revelation of the holy uh, uh, Al Quran, and also man of full of blessing and forgiveness. So just like uh, what it felt by all the Garuda troops who are celebrating the Ramadan uh, this year in uh, in our mission area, carry out Ramadan fun full of joy because of togetherness and also the solidarity among the soldiers not only uh, from our contingent but also so we are not from another uh, TCC uh, although we are away from far family so however there's a thing that Indonesian people do to cure the longing during the, 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 the fasting month uh, when it comes to uh, breaking uh, the fast uh, they all together preparing the event. very unique yeah this is the tradition
condition of uh, the uh, preparing all the infrastructure with the special menu of in recent paper, just like, like Fernas, like also another Fernas, uh, typical uh, Indonesian diseases. Mm -hmm. So again, the other groups should serve. They, uh, they have uh, their own way of treating, longing for their families in Indonesia. They have, they have time to contact their family. Even in some area, uh, we still have a uh, 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 poor signal. So, uh, and we have to be patient about this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Colonel. Yeah. That's uh, the, the question. Well, Colonel, we thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing your experience and also uh, speaking uh, with us on behalf of your task force over there. And we are certainly be. Uh, we're certainly waiting for you to come back uh, to Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So and that a was successful mission. Yeah, successful yeah. mission. That was the commander of Indo RDB 39E Monusco Task Force, Colonel Made Sandi Augusto from South Africa. And, and now we are going for another break. Yes. And after the break, Akira will deliver economics and business updates. Stick tuned with us on a three-hour news show only on C today. To see today business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on See Today, today business. business. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Apa sih yang <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi badu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu bikin. <laughs> Bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu ya. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala botak gak bisa disisir. Pala botak gak bisa <laughs> Their existence is now being critically endangered. Dia memiliki ekor yang sangat panjang, lebih panjang jauh lebih panjang daripada badannya sendiri. Tekniknya dia keluar di itu bergelombol menggunakan punggung temannya untuk naik. Sebenarnya konservasi burung hantu di sini latar belakangnya jelas asas manfaat. Jadi kita pengen melestarikan burung, melestarikan satwa, tapi juga otomatis dampaknya ke masyarakat yang khususnya sekarang kalau di sini kan petani. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. And welcome back to the program. Now it's time for C Today Business, and you're still with me, Muhammad Ahir. Let's go for our first story from West Java Province. The Jati Jajar Bus Terminal in Depok, West Java, has installed a solar power plant 
to general electricity supply during the eight homecoming traffic flow. So the solar power plant can generate up to 100 kilowatts per hour with its energy stored inside a battery. However, during the rainy season, the terminal is still using electricity supply from the state electricity company or PLN due to lower amounts of electricity generated. In addition to cost saving, the solar power plant is deemed environmentally friendly and in line with the government's mission in using renewable energy. The solar power plant, which has been operating since January at the terminal, was initiated by the Transportation Ministry's Greater Jakarta Transportation Agency to apply renewable energy to add public facilities. ini berarti kita sudah menciptakan yang namanya uh, green energy ya itu kan selaras juga dengan tujuan uh, pemerintah untuk bisa memulai menggunakan energi yang terbaru ya dengan adanya PLTS ini juga kami sedikit banyak mulai belajar nih bagaimana caranya uh, penerapan energi terbarukan ini di terminal jati jati and still from the country, Pertamina subsidiary Tugu Insurance recorded a net profit after tax of 1.3 trillion rupees or around 80 million US dollars in the financial report as of December 31st, 2023. Tugu Insurance recorded 1.3 trillion rupees in 2023, a 280% surge year on year compared to only 347 billion rupees in December 31st, 2022. While the revenue in 2023 reached 3.5 trillion rupees compared to 3 trillion rupees year on year. Total expenses were also down by 24.1% annually to 1.9 trillion rupees. Now let's move on to the next story. The artificial intelligence race is heating up as Amazon is set to make a record massive investment in an AI startup. Amazon announced that it will invest another 2.75 billion US dollars in Gen AI or Generative AI startup Anthropic. This will be Amazon's largest ever outside investment in the company's entire history. Amazon said last September that it will invest up to $4 billion in the AI startup and the latest investment will mark the second part of this total. The startup Anthropic's AI products are in direct competition with OpenAI's ChatGPT and recently the startup debuted their AI model Cloud3 which they say outperforms OpenAI's GPT4 and Google's Gemini Ultra. Those were the economics and business update for this hour after the break or when we return it's time for Hans Lango or no sorry Kai Surya who will the story from the world of sport see today's sport don't go anywhere Today, business your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on City Today Business. business. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Ini tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. 
menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Aku sih ngajari. <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi batu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu bikin. <laughs> Bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala botak nggak bisa disisir. Pala botak nggak bisa. <laughs> Their existence is now being critically endangered. Dia memiliki ekor yang sangat panjang, lebih panjang jauh lebih panjang daripada badannya sendiri. Tekniknya dia keluar di itu bergelombol menggunakan punggung temannya untuk naik. Sebenarnya konservasi burung hantu di sini latar belakangnya jelas asas manfaat. Jadi kita pengen melestarikan burung, melestarikan satwa, tapi juga otomatis dampaknya ke masyarakat yang khususnya sekarang kalau di sini kan petani. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome back to our new show, Lesson C Today. It's time for C Today Sports Updates with me, Kai Soria. Now, Andrew Wiggins scored 23 points at the Golden State Warriors, uh, overcame Draymond Green's early ejection to beat the Orlando Magic 101 and 93 on Wednesday. Andrew Wiggins contributed 23 points while Steph Curry clinched the final two baskets despite struggling with his shooting as the Golden State Warriors triumphed over the Orlando Magic 101-93 on Wednesday. The Warriors rallied to secure the victory despite Draymond Green's early ejection. Green, who missed 16 games after he was suspended by the NBA in December, was ejected again for disputing a foul call on Wiggins. It was Green's fourth ejection of the season, and Curry had 17 points, going 6 of 18 from the field and 10 assists. Cole Anthony led Orlando with 26 points and 8 rebounds. Paolo Banchero had 15 points and 8 rebounds. The Warriors, who holding the 10th spot in the Western Conference, won for the 20th time in 35 road games. With 8.24 remaining in the first, that's, that's a huge blow. Kaminga, well, Steph is... We're going to stay at the NBA's. Paul George leads the Los Angeles Clippers with 22 points to a 108-107 win over the Philadelphia 76ers on Wednesday night. Howie Leonard completed two three-point plays late in the game and then made a block at the rim on the final possession to decide a 108-107 win over the Philadelphia 76ers. James Harden had 16 points and 14 assists for the Clippers and his return to the Wells Fargo Center. Tyrese Maxey had 26 points for the 76ers while Kelly Ober Jr. added 17 points. Oubre claiming he tried to foul him before the gather. Maxi long distance. In and out. Harden throws it ahead. Leonard. And we move on to Indonesian Basketball League now, where President Director Junas Miradiarshah has made two schedule adjustments to avoid scheduling conflicts for Prawira Bandung and Pelita Jaya Jakarta. This would allow the two to compete on the finals of the Basketball Competitions League and the Indonesian Basketball League that are set to be held in June. Ini jadwal Juni bermainnya di mana, tanggal persisnya berapa itu yang kita lagi uh, tunggu supaya mudah-mudahan uh, bisa kita sesuaikan dengan uh, jadwal pertandingan kita yang di ujung karena Juni itu kan udah 
menjelang ujungnya uh, regular season IBL. Saat ini IBL sudah menyusun dua skenario yang kita buat kalau mainnya di Indonesia atau kalau mereka lolos mainnya di luar negeri, nah itu kita bikin dua opsi supaya kita bisa kasih tahu dari sekarang untuk semua tim dia bisa menyusun uh, apa, venue dan sebagainya. Gitu. Let's move on to football now. It is a great day for girls in sport because as many as 35 women football players have been called up for tryouts to eventually make it to the final roster for the AFC Under-17 Women's Asian Cup in Sri Lanka in May this year. National team coach Satoru Moshizuki said in a statement that he's aiming for talented athletes with above average skills to compete on the global level. The first batch of tryouts took place on March the 25th to the 27th. Head coach Moshizuki led the scouting and selected the senior players himself. The players were said unable to give their best due to the limited time available ahead of the tournament. The coach added that he is scouting talented athletes with above average skills to perform on the global stage. Those who pass the initial tryouts phase will join the second phase on March the 29th to the 31st. The tournament itself will kick off in Bali on May the 6th to the 19th. Indonesia as hosts are in Group A along with South Korea, North Korea and the Philippines. いや、あの、一番感じたのは選ぶのは難しいなってことです。あと、ま、なんでかというと、やはり今回初めてこうやって17の選手を集まってもらってセレクションをしたので、そもそもの基準とか now let's move on to international football. Harry Kane will have a reunion with his former club Tottenham. Hotspur along with teammate Eric Deer in August when Bayern Munich visits North London for a preseason friendly meeting in the Malta Cup. Kane started his career by joining Tottenham's young youth team in 2004. He went on to become the all time leading scorer for Spurs with 280 goals and took over the England captain's armband in the process. But after 12 trophy-less seasons as a Tottenham first-team player, Kane decided to leave his boyhood club and join Bayern München in August 2023. Kane has been in outstanding form since moving to Munich and has scored 37 goals in 35 games in all competitions. But the Champions League is currently the only realistic chance for Bayern to win a trophy in this season as Bayer Leverkusen currently holds a 10-point lead at the top of the Bundesliga. You know, when I get the time to, to go back, I'll come in and, and say bye to everyone properly, and not just the players, but the staff, you know, a lot of the, the chefs, the kitmen, the physios, you know, I've spent over 15 years of my life with, so, um, yeah, I didn't get that time because things were so uh, up and down, but uh, for sure over the next few weeks or whenever I get some time to go back, I'll go in and, and say bye properly to everyone. And that wraps up sports updates for this hour, but when we come back, we'll have more information for you. Of course, stay tuned for the second hour of the three-hour news show only on C Today. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day, Day Business. business. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Their existence is now being critically endangered. 
dia memiliki ekor yang sangat panjang, lebih panjang jauh lebih panjang daripada badannya sendiri. Tekniknya dia keluar di itu bergelombol menggunakan punggung temannya untuk naik. Sebenarnya konservasi burung hantu di sini latar belakangnya jelas asas manfaat. Jadi kita pengen melestarikan burung, melestarikan satwa, tapi juga otomatis dampaknya ke masyarakat yang khususnya sekarang kalau di sini kan petani. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Figur publik kok kere. Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Apa sih yang dicari? <laughs> Bini setuju aja? Warna setuju, saya jadi batu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu, bikin. <laughs> bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala Botak gak bisa disisir. Pala Botak gak bisa <laughs> Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome back to our viewers in Indonesia and also across the world. Thank you so much for joining us here on the three-hour news show on C Today. Now, in case you just join us, we still have two more hours to bring you the latest from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and also around the world. I'm your host for today, Hans Lyle. And I'm Kai Surya. Welcome to the three-hour news show. I'm in charge of sports updates today. And make sure to also follow us on X, Instagram, and YouTube on C Today News for the latest updates. And with us, of course, is Muhammad Ahir, bringing you the latest from the business world. Yes, thank you, Kai. Yes, my name is Muhammad Ahir. I'm still your money for today. Uh, for today, I mean, we'll take a look at market and business updates from Indonesia, the region, and elsewhere around the world. <coughs> but again, firstly, let's take a look at what made the top stories for today. The latest in the tin commodity trading system corruption case involving entrepreneur Harfi Muiz and Helena Lim has seen several tin dredging sites that were used by shell companies now abandoned. In C today business, the Jati Jajar bus terminal in Depok, West Java has installed a solar power plant to generate electricity supply during the eight homecoming traffic flow. <coughs> And it's a great day for Indonesian girls. As many as 35 female football players have been called up for the selection process to compete in the AFC Under-17 Women's Asian Cup in Sri Lanka in May this year. And please be sure to stay tuned later in our See the Ramadan series because we'll bring you stories about exploring Indonesia with Camper Fan with a content creator from Indonesia as well. All right, let's kick start our second hour with uh, this one update where the Constitutional Court Ethics Council of Indonesia, or locally known as MKMK, has ruled on ethical violations committed by Chief Justice Anwar Usman. Chief Justice Anwar Usman has uh, again sentenced, has been again sentenced to ethical sanctions by the council, and this time Anwar was given a written warning for his violations. The Constitutional Court Ethics Council of Indonesia stated that 
Chief Justice Anwar Usman has committed ethical violations. The statement was made in the verdict hearing on the alleged ethical violations of three constitutional judges today at the Constitutional Court in Jakarta. The three constitutional judges are Anwar Usman, Saudi Isra, and Arif Hidayat. This verdict was read against five reports of alleged violations of the ethics of judges received by the council. The ethical violations found were related to Anwar Usman's press conference remarks and his actions in filing a lawsuit with the Jakarta State Administrative Court, or PT UN, regarding his removal as chairman of the council in November 2023. Memutuskan, menyatakan, satu, hakim terlapor, terbukti melakukan pelanggaran terhadap kode etik dan perilaku hakim konstitusi sebagaimana tertuang dalam prinsip kepantasan dan kesopanan butir penerapan angka 1 dan angka 2 Sabta Karsa Utama. Dua, menjatuhkan sanksi berupa teguran tertulis kepada hakim terlapor. Meanwhile, the Constitutional Court today is hearing arguments from the General Election Commission and the legal team of Nominees Prabowo Subianto and Gibran Raka Raka. This comes after the hearing arguments from their opponents Anis Baswedan and Ganjar Pranowo regarding what they allege to be irregularities during the 2024 presidential elections. And to know more, of course, we're now connected with our news team, Satya Pramesi and Vijay Reza Aninita, live on the grounds of the court. Messi, please go ahead. What do you have for us in US update? Thanks, Kai. Thanks, Akhir. Thanks, Hans. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, this is about the 2024 presidential elections is current hearing that's occurring in the Constitutional Court uh, behind us. I'll give you a little bit of background. The preliminary hearings for the election dispute took place uh, right here just yesterday where Anis Baswedan and Ganjar Pranowo uh, made their first arguments uh, at 9 a.m. and at 1 p.m. respectively, with Anis Baswedan having uh, presented his case uh, just before uh, Ganjar Prano, I mentioned earlier. Now, today the court will hear responses from the General Elections Commission as well as the Prabowo Subianto campaign team and the General Election Supervisory uh, Agency, or Bawaslu, regarding their responses to uh, Anis and Ganjar's team's um, complaints, if you will, to the Constitutional Court. Now, the trial today will actually combine the two cases from the presidential candidate pairs of number one, which was Anis Muhaymin, and number three, which was Ganjar uh, Mahfoud, uh, to be argued in a single of, uh, in, a, in, a, in a single day, in a single session. And the hearing began at around 1 p.m. earlier today. It's now uh, 2.30 p.m., so the uh, session itself has been going on for two and a half hours. The last I heard was from uh, the uh, Prabowo Subianto uh, campaign uh, legal team who was making their um, case against the uh, complaint set forth against them. Now, those complaints include Anis Baswedan and his legal team highlighting uh, various alleged irregularities, including changing the candidacy requirements after uh, Gibran Rakabuming Raka registered as a vice presidential candidate and alleged uh, nepotism within the government uh, favoring Prabowo Gibran. Meanwhile, Ganjar Pranowo and his legal team also alleged uh, structural violations in the form of nepotism uh, by the government, including by what he alleged to be President, President Joko Widodo to secure victory for uh, Prabowo Gibran. Now, all of these are still allegations. They haven't been proven yet. They haven't been, uh, they haven't been struck by the Constitutional Court as something that is legally binding yet. But both parties, uh, the Anis Baswedan and Ganjar Pranowo campaign legal teams, have requested the uh, Constitutional Court to nullify the KPU's decision to and conduct a uh, revote. Meanwhile, the KPU is currently inside, as I mentioned earlier, or has uh, presented their arguments, while Prabowo's legal team, who is currently having uh, their arguments presented, have denied allegations which have stemmed from these uh, lawsuits, namely the Anis Paswera and Ganja's lawsuits. In the meantime, I heard some chirps from around the uh, room that they will finish in around 10 to 20 minutes so I will keep you updated regarding any further information that comes along my way. Back to you guys at the studio. All right. Thank you so much, Satya Pramesi and Reza Anindita from Mahkamah Constitusi or the court, uh, Constitutional Court Justice. Thank you so much. And the constant stream of wounded Palestinian children 
has stunned the international team of doctors visiting the hospital in central Gaza, which was overwhelmed by casualties from Israel's shelling and bombardment. Pediatric intensive care doctor from Jordan, Tanya Hash Hassan, described the cases she had seen in just the past 10 hours at the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital in the town of Deir al-Balakh. Haj Hassan was part of a seven doctor team that has been working at the hospital since the middle of March, set up by the Relief Group, International Rescue Committee and Medical Aid for Palestinians. Their two-week visit has given them a first-hand look at Gaza's estimated health sector under their nearly six-month Israeli or six more months Israeli assault in the tiny territory. Only around a dozen of Gaza's 36 hospitals are even partially functioning. The rest have gone completely out of commission as they ran out of fuel and medicine, were surrounded and raided by Israeli troops, or were damaged in fighting. The remaining facilities, including the El Al Aqsa Martyrs hospitals, must take in the flood, uh, take in, in uh, take in the flood of patients, even as they struggle with limited supplies and overwhelmed staff. المرضى موجودين في الكاردورات يعني احنا لما نروح ندور فيش غرف للمرضى كلهم موجودين في الكاردورات اما على فرشة على الارض او حرام على الارض او على السرير ما في له مقومات اساسية فهم صراحة بيعانوا بيعانوا جدا You asked me about the ability of the healthcare system to deal with it People are tired We, our team has been doing this for five days We're exhausted I can't imagine what the Ghazan team who's been here for 162 days doing this 24-7 62 days without resources is dealing with. You asked me whether they had the resources to, to deal with these cases. No. Well, at least four Palestinians were killed in an Israeli airstrike that hit Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah overnight Tuesday. The bodies were taken to the Abu Yosef al Najjar hospital where they were counted. Moreover, the blast flattened a residential building in Rafa, and residents say that more than 10 people remain trapped under the rubble. In the morning after the strike, dozens of Palestinians were seen sifting through the rubble of the pancake building to look for survivors. The latest fatal strike comes amid Israeli threats of a ground assault into Rafa, the area where most of Gaza's Palestinians have been displaced to. And still related to the ongoing conflict, Pope Francis praised two fathers at his weekly audience on Wednesday. One was a Palestinian and the other an Israeli who both lost daughters due to violence in the Middle East. Pope Francis appeared in better health on Wednesday, walking into the hall on his own with a cane and delivering his prepared text with a strong voice. Pope Francis comment, uh, common, commended excuse me, two fathers during his weekly audience. One was a Palestinian and the other an Israeli, both of whom have tragically lost daughters to violence in the Middle East. Basam Aramin, a Palestinian, lost his 10-year-old daughter and Rami El Hanan, an Israeli, lost his 13-year-old daughter. At the end of the audience, the Pope, who was pushed in a wheelchair, warmly greeted the two men. E qui oggi, in questa udienza, ci sono due persone, due papà. Sono i primi. Un, un israeliano e uno arabo. Ambe due hanno perso le loro figlie in questa guerra. E ambe due sono amici. Non guardano all'inimicizia della guerra, ma guardano 
l'amicizia dei due uomini che si vogliono bene e che hanno passato per la stessa crocifissione. Pensiamo a questa testimonianza, tanto bella, di queste due persone che hanno sofferto nelle loro figlie la guerra della Terra Santa. Cari fratelli, grazie per la vostra testimonianza. Now from Vatican City, let's fly to the United States of America where the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland early on Tuesday has significantly affected traffic in the region and cut off a main access road to and out of the port city. Authorities believe that the disaster will worsen congestion around Baltimore's two harbor tunnels and westbound Interstate 695 since many individuals are forced to look for alternate routes. Meanwhile, maritime traffic to and from the Baltimore port has been suspended indefinitely. The collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge is diverting traffic and shipping around one of America's busiest ports on the East Coast. Transportation experts believe that the disaster will worsen congestion around Baltimore's two harbor tunnels and westbound Interstate 695 as drivers seek alternate routes. Those who travel to and from the north as well as south may take the Fort McHenry Tunnel, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. However, commercial vehicles carrying materials that are prohibited in the tunnel crossings should plan on using the Baltimore Beltway. Drivers have also been told to prepare for extra commuting time until further notice. Meanwhile, maritime traffic to and from the port of Baltimore has been suspended indefinitely. This decision was made after a cargo ship lost power and plowed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse on Tuesday. Video shot by a helicopter pilot hours after the bridge collapsed shows a group of cargo ships by the William Preston Lane Jr. Memorial Bay Bridge, which is near the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. Meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said it was too soon to give a time frame to clear the channel, which measures around 15 meters deep. A cargo ship lost power and rammed into a major bridge in Baltimore on Tuesday. It destroyed the structure in a matter of seconds and plunged it to the river in a terrifying collapse that could disrupt the vital shipping port for months. Six people were missing and are presumed dead. The ship's crew issued a mayday moments before the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed, which enabled authorities to limit traffic on the span. The vessel struck one of the bridge's supports, causing the structure to collapse. A section of the span also came to rest on the bow of the ship, which caught fire. The collision happened at midnight, long before the busy morning commute on the bridge that stretches 2.6 kilometers and was used by 12 million vehicles last year. And still on the Baltimore Bridge collapse, according to the National Transportation Safety Board, the cargo ship that caused the incident actually was carrying hazardous materials. We did bring in uh, one of NTSB's senior hazmat investigators today to begin to look at the cargo and the cargo manifest. Uh, he was able to identify 56 containers of hazardous materials. Uh, that's 764 tons of hazardous materials, mostly corrosives, flammables, uh, and some miscellaneous hazardous materials, class nine hazardous materials, which uh, would include lithium ion batteries. Some of the hazmat containers were breached uh, we have seen uh, shear on, or sheen, sorry, sheen on the um, waterway. The federal, state, and local authorities are aware of that, and they will uh, be in charge of addressing those issues. And let's fly to the home country where the tin commodity trading system corruption that involved entrepreneur Harfi Muiz and Helena Lim and several tin dredging sites that were used by shell companies are now abandoned with only security officers on hand to guard the sites. 
The Attorney General's office has named 16 suspects involved in the corruption case in Banca Blitong, ranging from former officials of private and businesses to state-owned enterprise PT Tima. Meanwhile, several witnesses are still questioned, which signif uh, signifies that the case may involve more suspects in the future. Another entrepreneur from Banka Blitung Tamron, otherwise known as Aon, was also named as one of the suspects in the tin commodity trade system corruption back in February. The Attorney General's office continued its investigation in central Banka, where they captured Aon's brother, Tony Tamsil, for interfering with the process. They also questioned several witnesses who allegedly involved in the corruption in the mining operation permit area of PT Tima Tebeka from 2015 to 2022. Previously, billions of rupiah and several documents were seized as evidence. The investigating team also captured another suspect with the initial of AA, who was the operational manager of CV VIP and PT MCM and secured 53 excavators and two bulldozers belonging to Aon. According to the Attorney General's Office Special Crime Investigation Director, Kun Tadi, the case began in 2018 when CFE or CFE VIP signed a cooperation agreement to rent a smelting processing equipment with PT Tima TBK. Aon, who was the owner of CFE VIP, ordered AA to establish shell companies to extract thin illegally from the Pete Tima mining area. The company also issued a working permit to show that there were residues from transporting tin. Aon was arrested at the detention center of the Attorney General's office, while AA was arrested at the detention center of South Jakarta Prosecutor's office. <laughs> berhasil mengamankan 55 unit alat berat dua diantaranya merupakan bulldozer dan 35 eh 53 merupakan eskavator selain itu tim juga berhasil mengamankan logam mulia seberat 1062 gram uang tunai dari berbagai mata uang Antara lain sebesar 80 miliar, 83 miliar, 800 juta rupiah sekian. Mata uang asing berupa 1 juta 547 US dollar, 400 ribu 43 Singapura dollar, dan 1.600 1.800 Australia dollar. And as mentioned, aside of Tamron, um, AA or Ahmad Albani as the operational manager of CVVIP was also uh, arrested. But aside from them, as mentioned before, uh, several officials from Petatima Tebeka uh, around that time of uh, the corruption case uh, was happening also got arrested. Uh, aside from CEO, uh, we also see in the uh, in the list of uh, the arrested people, the CFO of PT Tima, Emil Ermindra, and also the COO of PT Tima, uh, who is Alwin Albar, and uh, we'll be uh, skip, uh, we'll be updating you uh, uh, the uh, update of this case. And we're going for the quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the latest from Southeast Asia and also around the world. Yes, and later during the hour, I'll again bring you the latest from the world of business. So make sure you stay tuned right here on our new show only on C Today. China has been racing against time for rescue and disaster relief work after a landslide on Monday struck a mountainous village in southwest China's Yunnan province. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam. Makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh 
sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on City Day Business. business. Morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. show those to see today it is time for regional news from Southeast Asia let's start with Brunei where the Legislative Council of the Brunei government or LegCo is in its meeting on March 23rd continues to prioritize the Brunei vision of 2035 the council has prepared several strategies to support Brunei's vision as a developed country According to Special Advisor to His Majesty and Prime Minister Dato Isa Awang Ibrahim at the 20th session of the LEGCO meeting, the Legislative Council is preparing a strategic plan to support the Brunei Vision 2035. Moreover, Wawasan Brunei or Brunei Vision 2035 initiated by Sultan Hassan al bolkiah in 2004 aims to propel the country to greater heights including becoming a developed country. In addition to achieving this goal, the Bruneian Leg Co. this year is setting the national budget to focus on efforts through infrastructure development, education and reducing dependence on oil and gas. Furthermore, Dato Isa Awang Ibrahim also emphasized the needs and expectations of stakeholders and the people to enhance public confidence in the government's endeavors. And from Indonesia, a collision occurred in Balikpapan, East Kalimantan, where a motorist was killed after a truck lost control while descending and flipped on the side of the road. A truck reportedly lost control while descending a hill and flipped on the other side of the road, killing at least one motorist who was also passing by. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene and his motorcycle was burned due to the collision. The truck also destroyed a shop house on the side of the road. The driver of the truck is now under investigation and traffic was pretty much back to normal after the incident. Uh, 
dan melintas di tanjakan Masda. Kemudian nah, sampainya di turunan Masda, nah, tiba-tiba sopir oleng masuk ke kanan, masuk ke jalur kita, kemudian menabrak tiang listrik. Kemudian sopir tidak bisa mengendalikan kendaraannya sehingga menabrak satu dua ruko yang ada di itu sehingga kendaraan masuk ke halaman ruko. Nah, untuk korban sementara masih satu uh, Master X karena identitasnya tidak ada dan masih kami upayakan untuk menghubungi keluarganya. Nah, And back to Indonesia now still, Indonesia will host the 10th World Water Forum in Bali from May 18th to the 25th. The government, through the Communication and Informatics Ministry, held a press conference earlier today to discuss preparations for the upcoming forum. The government, along with the Public Works and Housing Ministry, Foreign Affairs Ministry, Tourism and Creative Economy Ministry, Coordinating Ministry for Maritime and Investment Affairs, and also the Indonesian Police, are preparing for the event which will be held in 50 days. 12 heads of state and 54 ministers from 172 countries will also be invited at the event. Compared to previous international forums in Indonesia, such as the G20 or ASEAN summits, the 10th World Water Forum will involve hundreds to thousands of non-governmental participants, including youth leaders. The forum will discuss six sub-themes, namely water security, Water for Humans and Nature, Disaster Risk Management, Cooperation in Hydro Diplomacy, Sustainable Water Finance, as well as Knowledge and Innovation. Amid the increasing hydrometeorological disasters due to climate change, the World Water Forum holds a critical role for the government to impose new policy and set up commitments and agreements to tackle global challenges in the water sector. Isu air adalah isu kita bersama. Isu air adalah isu yang selama ini uh, lintas batas, lintas border yang harus kita selesaikan. Sehingga konflik harus kita reduksi. Kita jauhkan uh, masalah dan bencana, kita hadirkan kesejahteraan untuk uh, untuk upaya kita bersama. Jadi teknologi-teknologi yang dimiliki ya oleh negara-negara seperti Belanda, Perancis, ya, uh, namanya, uh, Jepang, uh, Amerika, kemudian Australia, Kanada, ya dan tetangga kita di ASEAN juga termasuk ya Singapura, Thailand, Malaysia, Filipin kita undang untuk tadi bergabung bersama-sama dan ini adalah sangat momen, sangat fundamental sekali bahwa ketika kita ya sedang ya menghadapi persoalan-persoalan terkait dengan tata kelola air di manapun di muka bumi ini ya baik karena kekurangan maupun karena kelebihan ya forum ke-10 ini sepakat untuk berbeda dengan sembilan forum yang pernah kita lakukan yang pernah dilakukan oleh World Water Council selama ini. Begitu Mas Rui dan termasuk juga tadi bahwa uh, peran dari pemerintah daerah. Ya, jadi yang perlu juga saya highlight di sini bahwa untuk pertama kali juga kita ingin membawa, mengekspos, memaparkan ya uh, pemerintah daerah yang kita hadirkan nanti di Bali untuk mereka juga tadi belajar. Mereka tadi juga membangun komunikasi untuk tadi untuk bekerja sama dengan uh, partner mereka di luar negeri. And now, let's jump into our Ramadan stories from Indonesia and around the world. It's always a dance-worthy tune, right? <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, we have Ramadan stories from Indonesia and across the world, of course, and we'll start from Indonesia now. The Indonesian National Search and Rescue Agency, or Basarnas, will deploy 25,000 personnel for the Eid homecoming and return traffic flow. Well, this search will mm -hmm. be needed. They will be on standby across Indonesia as part of the Eid search and rescue operations. Head of Basarnas, Air Marshal Kusworo visited a Basarnas regional office in Kendari to check on equipment and inform the personnel ahead of the operations. Kusworo explained that the office will also receive additional marine safety equipment. According to the agency's data, water and sea rescues mainly occurred 
in Kandari in 2023. He also emphasized that regional offices must focus more on deploying their personnel and safety equipment for the upcoming Eid holidays. Untuk mudik secara total dari jumlah yang ada kemarin kalau uh, sekitar 4.500 ya dari potensi itu sekitar 17.000 21 ya sorry 21.000 dari potensi 21.000 lebih dari kita uh, personel untuk uh, siaga besar dalam rangka arus mudik ini adalah sekitar 4.500 jadi total semuanya hampir 25.000 kalau arus mudik ini ya Jalan laka kecelakaan darat ya di tol tempat-tempat wisata oke okay, penyeberangan ya itu menjadi fokus konsentrasi kita di luar daripada layanan tadi satu satu lima jadi itu fokusnya. Safety is indeed very important, especially in times of the monsoon season that we're Agreed. seeing right now. Now, moving on, there are many ways to spread kindness during the holy month of Ramadan, and one of which is by sharing free iftar snacks for Muslims. Now, such an activity was also carried out in a unique way at the Dharma Bhakti Temple in Sidoarjo, East Java, where the lion dance was performed mm. while hundreds of free snacks were given to local residents. Three live dancers from the Dharma Bhakti Temple entertained residents who passed by along Jalan Bonti in Sidoarjo Regency, East Java. 500 free iftar snacks were also given away. This activity was initiated by the Buddhist community representatives in Sidoarjo and the local Chinese society to reflect religious tolerance and respect for Muslims who are fasting in Ramadan. They would collect donations independently for the iftar snack distribution, which is routinely carried out annually. Hundreds of iftar snack boxes ran out in less than 10 minutes. Some were even surprised by the presence of the lion dance during Ramadan and consider this a unique way to share kindness. Mm, I love how the lions also get to give it. <laughs> it is a, you know, whatever comes out of the lion's mouth is supposed to bring you prosperity. Eyes. Oh, right? Yeah. Look at that. So usually you give the ang pao yeah. to the lion. So now the lions are actually giving away the takjil. Yeah. The onlookers. And you know, during Chinese New Year also we touch the tongue, right, of yes, the lion yes. because that brings prosperity. For good luck. Exactly. Whatever comes out of the lion brings good luck. Jadi hari ini kita bersama-sama dengan tim yaitu dari Umat Buddha di Sidoarjo, tim dari Bakti Pan Sosial Marga Tionghoa di Sidoarjo, juga teman-teman Barong di Sidoarjo. Hari ini kita bersama-sama saling berbagi di bulan yang suci, di bulan yang penuh berkah. Kita bersama-sama membagikan ya sekedar kudapan buat saudara-saudara kita yang nanti menjalankan ibadah puasa. Semoga ibadah puasanya ini bisa menjadi berkah dan manfaat bagi kita semua. Ah, hari ini sekitar 500-an paket yang akan kita bagikan. Jadi ini hasil dari donasi dari teman-teman juga ada yang urunan ya jadi ada yang 20.000 ribu ada yang 10 ribu jadi kita ini memang dari anggota kita manfaatkan untuk masyarakat sekitar yang sedang menjalankan ibadah puasa kaget ya tadi gimana tahunya ada barong saya di sini tepat lewat ya lagi cari takjil Ternyata ada barongsai itu ya. Tadi dikasih takjil nih sama barongsainya ya. Senang ya. Now, if you're actually in the algorithm of Indonesian TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is in the social media, you might have uh, realized and you might have seen a lot of this circulating in the platform mm. where the takjil war phenomenon or the iftar snack war phenomenon have recently gone viral. It is a light-hearted joke, of course, where non-Muslims have the advantage to buy takjil ahead of iftar, while Muslims have to wait until the fast concludes. So, how does the public react to this? Well, let's take a look. The Tachil World phenomenon is gaining public attention on social media these days. Almost every day, many content creators would upload videos of the Tachil War experience. This phenomenon became popular 
when many non-Muslims join in to buy takjil or snacks to break the fast during Ramadan. This creates a different and interesting Ramadan experience as communities from different religious backgrounds gather for the same purpose to buy takjil. Ramai sekali har apa uh, tahun ini ya Ramadan tahun ini dibandingkan dengan yang kemarin-kemarin apalagi selama Covid itu itu udah beda banget sih lebih ramai sekarang dibandingkan kemarin. Kita ramainya itu kalau Sabtu Minggu dari jam 2 itu udah mulai ramai banget. Kalau misalkan dari hari Senin sampai hari Kamis itu nggak nggak terlalu ramai. <laughs> yang paling ramai itu kayak es buah gitu sama alpukat. The popular takjil menu in Ben Hill area ranges from ice cocktail desserts, rice porridge, cakes to mixed rice dishes. Many from Tibet, South Jakarta are even willing to travel to the Ben Hill area in central Jakarta to buy all sorts of food. Uh, kalau saya sih paling favorit sih bubur sumsum -sum sih. Kolak. Biasanya sih senang yang di maksudnya pangap, yang dibakar-bakar, pepes gitu atau ayam bakar gitu. Uh, bubur ketan hitam, biji salak. Ya bubur ini sih. Ah uh, bubur ini. All differences in beliefs come together during one month of Ramadan. People gather and queue at the whole press center to buy takjil with a sense of tolerance and mutual respect. Many say that the takjil war makes people happier and believe that Ramadan belongs to all the people. Takjil War is an event of unity, full of happiness and peace. Kalau pendapat saya sih nggak uh, masalah gitu, uh, selagi kita saling menghormati sih, apa apa. Ya kalau kita melihatnya sih ya nggak nggak ada masalahnya sih, selagi kita sama-sama ini sih apa menguntungkan juga gitu. Uh, seru ya kalau menurut aku ya gitu. Jadi benar-benar perbedaan ini uh, ya toleransi sih gitu ya seru aja lah pokoknya. Hmm, berarti kan memang acara setiap tahun ya gitu, tahu setahun sekali gitu. Ya. <laughs> Sebenarnya sih nggak apa-apa ya. Itu kan uh, rezeki dari si penjualnya juga. Kalaupun memang Nonis mau beli. Takjil yang nggak ada masalah sih sebenarnya. Uh, jadi penjualnya tuh kebagian semua rezeki gitu loh. Jadi mungkin kalau ini habis kan bisa penjualan lain bisa dapat juga rezekinya gitu. Uh, asal jangan diborong aja. Kalau pendapat saya sih ya semakin meriahnya bulan Ramadan ya nggak cuma di kalangan agama Islam doang tapi agama lain juga. Jadi ya seru-seruan aja bulan ini doang sih adanya. Uh, ya rebut-rebutan lah. Seru, seru, seru sih, seru. Cuma ya udah, ya udah biasa lah kayak gitu. Harus cepet-cepetan ya kan. The Takjil War will always be active in every month of Ramadan. The merrier the Takjil War, the more blessings everyone will have. Customers can enjoy their favorite food and sellers can gain a decent profit. Arif Subakti, Erwin Widiastama, for See Today. I'm trying to imagine Arif standing right there in front of me. I don't know why. <laughs> but I love the iftar snack. Exactly. And also the reaction from people, uh, from Muslims in Jakarta in particular, because uh, that one was actually taken in Jakarta. Uh, their reaction was actually, of course, quite heartwarming. Yeah. Because um, they feel like this specificity is not only for Muslims. Because we're in Indonesia, yeah. uh, we respect our diversities, and that's actually uh, the the form of, of uh, tolerance here in Indonesia. Because any festivities uh, in Indonesia, all of uh, Indonesian citizens should be able to actually enjoy it. I mean, take it like take it take it this way, right? Uh, Christmas brings about my favorite flavor of yes. the year: the cinnamon cookies, mm -hmm. the gingerbread cookies. I love that, and thank you, for, you know, for the Christian community for <laughs> celebrating Christmas. And aside of that, Christmas sales. Exactly. Christmas sales. But there are also Ramadan sales that is enjoyed by yeah. everybody. But I just wanted to say in regards to the iftar, right? Mm. It's because, you know, the Indonesian iftar snacks are just so good. Like, this is the only time of the year where it's being sold everywhere. everywhere. So, of course, yes. every Indonesian wants that. Exactly. So Yeah, you what, just get the privilege of, you know, ordering it <laughs> early on. Then. What not to love about Indonesian iftar snacks? Yep. All those things uh, revolving around um, coconut milk and palm sugar syrup. Oh uh, bananas God. and sweet potatoes. Oh, yeah. That's right. That too. All right. Now, 
after this, probably I'm going to scroll through my screen just to, you know, to be able to order some online. But now we are going for another break. And after the break, Akira will deliver economics and business updates. Akira, what do you have for us? Let's welcome him back. So, uh, before My favorite we... one is Pisang <laughs> Ijo, by the way, if you want to ask. <laughs> that was actually my question. How, how I'm waiting for read, this whole how conversation. How did you read my mind? <laughs> See, bananas and sweet potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 With the color combination, I love it. Like the red one, <laughs> yeah. the greenish and uh, yellowish and of course the... The syrup. No, 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 the, the porridge, you know? The, yeah, oh, rice sum porridge. Sum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bubur sum sum. Bubur sum sum. Rice pudding, as we call rice it. Rice pudding, rice. Oh, that. Not the kanji, sir. Yeah, no, no, kanji. <laughs> so, what do you have in the okay, economic business? Right. I have a question for you guys. Mm. So, have you ever been to the Jati Jajar bus terminal in Depok? No. Oh. No. Coincidentally, I've been there once, but not for some Stanford station. Uh -huh. I ran there because part oh, of did. the ultra marathon of my campus. Amazing. Yes, but now. They are transforming themselves to the place for the uh, solar power plant. Ah. Oh, solar power plant? Yes. So advanced. Supply. Yeah. Isn't it great? Amazing. Yeah. Supporting for the green power yes. for the homecoming traffic flow. Mm. All right, so after the break, I will deliver that story and other story. So let's take a look at some business updates from Indonesia and beyond. Stay here, only on the Travel Show, only on C Today. City Today Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Today, Today Business. business. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Apa sih yang dicari? <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi bahasa. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu bikin. <laughs> Bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu ya. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala botak gak bisa disisir. Pala botak gak bisa <laughs> Hello and welcome back. It's time again for C Today Business and you're still with me, Muhammad Ahir. Our first story comes from Indonesia, the Jati Jajar bus terminal in Depok, West Java. Now has installed a solar power plant to generate electricity supply during the eight homecoming traffic flow. So here's in the solar power plant can generate up to 100 kilowatts per hour with its energy stored inside a battery. However, during uh, this rainy season, the terminal is still using electricity supply from the state electricity company or PLN due to lower amounts of electricity generated. In addition to cost saving, the solar power plant is deemed environmentally friendly and in line with the government's mission in using renewable energy. The solar power plant, which has been operating since January at uh, the terminal, was initiated by the Transportation Ministry's Greater Jakarta Transportation Agency to apply renewable energy at public facilities. Okay. 
PKS ini berarti kita sudah menciptakan yang namanya uh, green energy ya itu kan selaras juga dengan tujuan uh, pemerintah untuk bisa memulai menggunakan energi yang terbaru ya dengan adanya PLTS ini juga kami sedikit banyak mulai belajar nih bagaimana caranya uh, penerapan energi terbarukan ini di terminal jati jati Move on to the next story, Pertamina subsidiary Tugu Insurance recorded a net profit after tax of 1.3 trillion rupees or around 80 million US dollars in the financial report as of December 31st, 2023. Tugu Insurance recorded 1.3 trillion rupees in 2023, a 280% surge year on year compared to, uh, compared to only 3 147 billion rupees in December 31st, 2022. Well, the revenue in 2023 reached 3.5 trillion rupees compared to 3 trillion rupees year on year. Total expenses were also down by 24.1% annually to 1.9 trillion rupees. And still from Indonesia, major Indonesian banks keep growing despite challenging macroeconomic conditions, including inflation and geopolitical tensions. So let's take a look at the profit of four big Indonesian banks or Himbara banks in 2023. Verse 1, State Bank uh, BRI or BRI saw the highest net profit last year reaching 60.4 trillion rupees, marking a 17.5% increase compared to 2022. In second was another State Bank Bank Mandiri, which saw net profit of 55.1 trillion rupees, marking 33.7% increase year on year. Meanwhile, the next one, private bank Bank Central Asia or BCA or BCA recorded a net profit of 36.4 trillion rupees, marking a 25.78% increase compared to the previous year. And finally, state-owned bank uh, or Bank Negara Indonesia or BNI saw its net profit up by 14.2% to reach 20.9 trillion rupees. And those were the economics and business updates for today. When we return, it's time again for our own Kai Surya, who deliver you the story from the world of sports, See Today Sports. Again, stay here only on the Triangle Show, only on See Today. Today Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on City Today, Today Business. business. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Aku sih ngajari. <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi batu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu, bikin. <laughs> bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra kadabra. Abra kadabra. Sing gobang gosir. Sing gobang gosir. Pala botak nggak bisa disisir. Pala botak nggak bisa. <laughs> Their existence is now being critically endangered. Dia memiliki ekor yang sangat panjang, lebih panjang jauh lebih panjang daripada badannya sendiri. Tekniknya dia keluar di itu bergelombol menggunakan punggung temannya untuk naik. Sebenarnya konservasi burung hantu di sini latar belakangnya jelas asas manfaat. Jadi kita pengen melestarikan burung, melestarikan satwa, tapi juga otomatis dampaknya ke masyarakat yang khususnya sekarang kalau di sini kan petani. 
Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. today now this is going to be the last sports update of this afternoon but i want to give you one of our headlining stories let's start there it's a good day for girls who play football here in indonesia because as many as 35 women football players have been called up for the tryouts to eventually make it to the final roster for the afc under 17 women's asian cup in sri lanka in bali this year now, national team coach Satoru Mochizuki said in a statement that he is aiming for talented athletes with above average skills to compete on the global stage. Now, the first batch of tryouts took place on March the 25th to the 27th. Head coach Mochizuki led the scouting and selected the senior players himself. The players were set an eight were said to be unable to give their best due to the limited time available ahead of the tournament. However, the coach added that he is scouting talented athletes with above average skills to perform on the global stage. Those who pass the initial tryout phase will join in the second phase on March the 29th to the 31st. The tournament itself will kick off in Bali on May the 6th to the 19th. Indonesia as hosts are in Group A along with South Korea, North Korea and the Philippines. いや、あの、一番感じたのは選ぶのは難しいなってことです。あと、ま、なんでかというと、やはり今回初めてこうやって17の選手を集まってもらって、セレクションをしたので、そもそもの基準とかお方の比較がなかったので、やはり選ぶ
And you want to get And that's a wrap on sports for today. But when we return, we'll have more information for you, including our signature segment, Sig the Story. So stay tuned all the way till the very end of the three-hour news show on Leon C today. City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Their existence is now being critically endangered. Dia memiliki ekor yang sangat panjang, lebih panjang jauh lebih panjang daripada badannya sendiri. Tekniknya dia keluar di itu bergelombol menggunakan punggung temannya untuk naik. Sebenarnya konservasi burung hantu di sini latar belakangnya jelas asas manfaat. Jadi kita ingin melestarikan burung, melestarikan satwa, tapi juga otomatis dampaknya ke masyarakat yang khususnya sekarang kalau di sini kan petani. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu, modern banget. Sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini itu seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Aku sih ngajari. <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi batu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu, bikin. <laughs> bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala botak nggak bisa disisir. Pala botak nggak bisa. <laughs> Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Hello, welcome back to the 3-hour news show on C Today. Now, for the next hour, we'll bring you the latest stories in our Cedar Story segment. And you're still with me, Hans Lang. And I'm Kai Surya. For the latest updates, you can also follow us on Instagram, X, and YouTube at C Today News. And also here with us. Hello, everyone. My name is Muad Ahir. But before anything else, let's see what's, make, uh, what's making headlines today. 
Coming from the home country, the latest in the tin commodity trading system corruption case involving entrepreneur Harfi Muiz and Helen Alim, which has seen several tin dredging sites that were used by shell companies now abandoned. In C today business, the Jati Jajara bus terminal in Depok, West Java, has installed a solar power plant to generate electricity electricity supply during the eight homecoming traffic flow. And great news for girls in football. As many as 35 women football players have been called up for the selection process to compete in the AFC Under-17 Women's Asian Cup in Sri Lanka in May this year. Like and Satan Hi. with us right here in the Sea Ramadan Stories. We'll bring you the stories about exploring Indonesia with Camper Fan with a content creator from Indonesia. the three hour news show yes it's uh, time to dance a little hands it's been a stressful two hours <laughs> no <I'm> kidding <laughs> yes we're all the others now let's uh, uh ah. shake it up a little bit because you're still watching our second segment see this ramadan stories now i have a question for you mm -hmm. um as an indonesian mm -hmm. uh what places in indonesia do you wish or want to visit because oh, indonesia is a very mm -hmm. big country so uh Raja Ampat is definitely on top of course, of yes. I also have the Rawan, although I'm not a beachy person, but I just wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. But I really want to be able to travel to the mountains in Bali, like, you know, the Kintamani area, uh, yes. Gunung, Gunung Agu, yeah. Gunung Batu. I like it cold, you know. Yeah. I already went to Dieng, which is supposedly one of the coldest tops in, in, in Indonesia. Indonesia. And that yeah. was amazing, but there's still a lot on my list. But what Indonesia kind of, too big. What kind of uh, means of transportation that you usually use? Um, I, you know, I don't mind flights, I don't mind trains, but uh, after my road trip in mm -hmm. the New Year's to Dieng, right? Yeah. I think my husband and I, it's safe to say, we're really addicted to road uh, trips oh, like right. using yeah, cars that's, that's interesting so i am certainly going to take notes in this next interview that we're going mm. to do because speaking of exploring indonesia we will now have a conversation with content creator who explores indonesia not like any ordinary traveler but with her camper van i'm nice. a huge fan i've always wanted to do camper vanning so mm. join us right now joining us right now is rahmi sofia also known as the mimi camper van girl hello mimi Hello. Hi. Oh, look at that. Is camper that your fan. camper van? No, the thing about camper van is everything is so functional. And look yeah. at those jars on on what on is shelf. that? <laughs> Which, I mean, I don't even know what. Okay, that is. straight away, you know, I heard you're currently in uh, Cafe Menanu. Cafe Menanu. Uh, Cafe Menanu, yes. sorry, in Kefa East Nusa Tenggara. So yes. uh, where? Uh, before yeah. you tell us where you've been, please talk to us about your camper van because I heard this is like yours. People would usually rent a camper van, but this is a huge investment for you. So talk to us about how you came about to become a travel blogger, but also owning a camper van. That is so cool. I think this one is not really camper van because uh, in the people's mind, is camper van is like looks very handsome. Yeah. Maybe I call it mini camper van mini camper van because there is no toilet only yeah only have bed electricity water <clears throat> as long as uh, support my journey uh, as long as functional this is i think i call it mini fan i think no mm. ah, i love that though okay and uh probably what i want to ask is um uh, you are um a travel blogger known to have been in mini camper fan uh, traveling throughout Indonesia, but uh, what was your job before this? My job is before it is like uh, market research. Oh, ah. in uh, 
yeah, private company like also in travel company and financial company, the startup company. Okay, and then after that, you decided to go on a travel journey. What of what prompted you to do this on your own in and camper van? In camp in mini camper van, mm. uh, which you funded yourself, and then uh, go on such a I don't know. I might say it's a risky journey because you have to go uh, through the road in Indonesia, which we know, um, you know, hills and, yeah. and, and, and mountains and stuff. Yeah, of course, so many consider before decide this lifestyle. Yeah, I know this house is so risk, uh, go alone. So, yeah, uh, when I decided, okay, I can do it, because I can do silat, also of course I uh, prepare myself. There is uh, 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 pepper spray and everything that protect my protect me along my journey. Yeah, that's why it make me feel that I can do it. And because I feel stuck in Jakarta with like normal life, I think life only once. Why not to decide to do this? Yeah, that's kind of uh, in my mind to do uh, to decide this. Uh, kind of lifestyle. You know, you're living my dream. You're already <laughs> living my dream. Free, you know, and, and being able to control what it is and what you want to see. Can you talk to us of the destinations that you have been with your camper van? Because there must be a lot. You're in Nusa Tenggara right now, but how many spots in yeah. Indonesia or beyond have you been within your <coughs> journey? Um, how many places? Maybe my journey starting in 2020. 23, uh, so already 15 months. I start from uh, Java, so I go to Bali, Bali, I go to Lombok, Lombok to Sumba, to Flores, to Sumba, and now in Kupang, in Timor Island. Oh, so you haven't been back to Jakarta since? Mm, I back. Uh, once uh, by airline, by flight, because there is a concert in Jakarta, that's why I don't make <laughs> Ah, so leave the camper van on the airport. Journey. Ah, such a flexible life, yeah, I like I that. I leave my camper van and then I go back to Jakarta, just uh, the same flight. So, uh, you've been uh, in this journey in your mini camper van for like 15 months now, right? Okay, yes. so can you walk us through your life and your mini camper fan, or can you take us on a tour of what what are actually there in oh, your mini camper fan? Okay, hopefully okay. mini, yeah, I will show you. Okay, my bed. Uh, yeah. uh huh. Yeah. This is my cabinet. This is my cabinet. There is a uh, uh, for the use uh, uh, book, uh, glass. Mm. I think this is my jamu. Oh, oh like jamu. jamu. You yeah, have the jamu jar, jamu shelf yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put my uh, clothes here. Okay. And then one, I use this one. I uh, ex exhaust fan. So I keep a break because I cannot use phone because it will be difficult, right? It will, mm. uh, yeah, if something happens, I will be there inside. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, so how's, how's your day usually? Because uh, for us here in the city, our days would be like waking up, making breakfast, going to the office, and then, you know, doing what you have to do at the office. In a, it's and a stuck that. routine. Yeah, and stuck routine. So how, how is your routine in a day in your mini camper fan? Yeah. I think this one is my, my freedom. Yeah, I can decide what I want to do, but I don't want to get lost because in the beginning, like, wow, I my life is free. I can do anything. <laughs> and then I feel I also have to have experience that I get lost, only watch the movie, go to the beautiful place. And then I, I realized that I, I have like a daily routine. So I have me. Also, need daily routine like exercise, like mm. uh, when I have to do laundry, when I have to do uh, regularly something. So I keep uh, my life is uh, normal. 
Mm. So one, one really interesting part that you mentioned before is that, um, you know, everything's in your van, including how, how does one shower with the water reserves? Because oh, there's yeah. no specific That's shower true. dedication. And, and, and like, uh, how, do you... you Laundry. Cool. Cooking yeah. and things like that. Do you do you have like because because sometimes there are these tents that are an extension to your van. Right? Uh -huh. Do you use yeah. that as well, yeah. or is do you only use yeah. the space in your van? Uh, but yes, your question is about where I shower. Uh, a lot of um, question couple. So I really shower in public uh, public uh, toilet like. Go to the masjid, go to the station, oh. the river, the kitchen. This is for shower, yeah. But for the cook, I cook outside. I have a meal, so I make a, a, a cook there with my portable uh, stove and gas and everything. So I cook outside. I have a uh, table that uh, sleeping. Oh, what about internet connection? Mm, yeah. Is it always truly but, good? So for internet connection, Oh, internet connection sometimes is good, sometimes it's not. When it's good, I make my content and post. But sometimes when I uh, the connection is good, it's time for me to uh, yeah to healing to myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. But there is bad connection. So when when there is no internet connection, what activities do you do in Word Self? Is it the journaling? Is it the yoga? Is it the reading a book? Or editing the video for your content? Yeah, because see? sometimes we find it hard, yeah. really hard to find the time and the will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the bad connection, it's time for me to interaction with the community, with the society. Oh. So I know the real life at least. Of, of this one is uh, nice actually. Then sometimes journal, and yoga, but mostly I do interaction with the uh, people around me when I visit the place. Mm -hmm. ah. So, um, uh, all this time uh, along your journey, have you um, encountered any difficulties dealing with mm. the local society or the local authorities? Since this is actually not common for us here in Indonesia, let's say uh, for you to park your camper fan to uh, to just remain overnight and stuff like that. Have you uh, encountered anything? And plus, you're a girl on your own. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Maybe because this one is like privilege. Yeah. Everyone in Indonesia is very kind, very nice. When you see mm -hmm. me, uh, female travel alone, they say, oh, poor Mimi, why you go alone? Like, come, come to my house, just stay. This one time, if I come, how compare, are compare, sleep in the people, how more people, because they really ask me to sleep in their house, uh, eat in their house. Oh. Also, I think people Asia is very nice. So, ask about the uh, tr uh, struggle or something. No, I, I, especially in East Indonesia, yeah. Mm. Wow. I just wanted to say that it's mm. it's so nice to hear that you know. Um, as a female especially, traveling on your own, and you're driving your own car, yes, right? You're not yes. just, you know, in a, in a, in a, with, with, your, with your luggage, luggage in the airport, <laughs> you know, going from place to place. You're literally driving your own car. You're practically living in there. That it's so nice to hear that people are so warm towards mm. you wherever you are. And that certainly, hopefully, can also inspire a lot more people to have the confidence to just get out there. Now, this is Ramadan, right? So, what differences do you experience when fasting uh, in a camper van than when you would be in a city? You know what I mean? Uh, I think in this one is really different, yeah. Before I live alone in Jakarta, in Costco, I eat uh, uh, sahur or iftar or berbuka alone. Uh, um, now everyone asking me to come in since, like, come to my house, uh, let's eat. Uh. So, <laughs> Uh, and then it's, it's more cheerful togetherness and then in masjid musola is so I think it's more uh, re more more meaningful and more cheerful now compared to the previous uh, uh, Ramadan experience. Wow. 
No, uh, listening to you explaining to us your experience, your daily life during the, the mini camper fan journey is very heartwarming. And um, let's say, you, because you've been spending your life on the road. Mm -hmm. Now, given that homecoming or the mudik season is quickly approaching, um, would you find anything, uh, any special treatment for yourself uh, just to dodge any any wave of people going back to their home and stuff like that just to dodge any traffic congestion and stuff for mudik yeah for people mm -hmm. mudik, i think yeah i think for the car first if you want to bring mudik you bring your own car i think please make sure your car in good condition please service it before you go and then check everything make it comfortable for that bus, it's one long journey, like you have to uh, uh, in your journey mm -hmm. of going back to home. And for the people self, it's don't push your heart to drive because you uh, want to go home uh, fast. Make, uh, <coughs> make sure if you tired, just take a rest. Mm -hmm. Just take a rest. I think that's my, yeah, that's my say for well, well, thank you for the tip, Mimi. You know, I want, I, I just have this one question. I've been, I've been trying to figure out why would somebody decide to go on a camper van journey? Now, thinking about your why, what is your end goal, Mimi? How long do you see yourself doing this? And where are the places you still want to go next? Mm. My, my, in the beginning of my journey, my target only for one year. But now, I, <laughs> I more than one year. My, I think as long as I have a budget, I still keep this lifestyle, keep my journey until finish Indonesia. If I, I hope, yeah. If oh I still have wow! Uh, that's I think because Indonesia is really beautiful place. The people is so nice, even though there is a bad people, of course. But I think more good people outside there is more than bad people. So if you, as long as you are good people, you will uh, attract a good people as well. So you will meet the best people in Indonesia and people in Indonesia. And Indonesia is very beautiful. That's why I want to keep continue my journey until finish Indonesia. Wow. wow. All the best of luck and really stay safe, okay? Yes. And stay healthy, safe. most important. So Mimi, yes. thank you so much you. and I uh, hope you have a you know great journey ahead. Thank you so much for talking to us. I'm definitely taking notes because I want to take my kids on camper van journeys as well. So thank you. And also Eid Mubarak for you. Yes. Thank you, Eid Mimi. Mubarak. Wow. Wow. Is this a girl? It's very heartwarming because uh, you know, from from our conversation with Mimi, she said that. We need to give people a chance. Yes. We need to give people um, the benefit of the doubt because we've been we've been so caught up in the world that's full of, you know, cautious uh, situations and stuff like but that. But you know, another thing <clears throat> that I, I heard from her is mm -hmm. like, you if you need freedom, then go ahead and grab that. Drink. True. Yes. You know what? She she's doing something that I've always thought I wanted to do. Uh -huh. But and I actually thought like you know wouldn't it be great to just go somewhere on your own? But then you know, you know, as an Indonesian woman, you would face judgment upon making this decision, true, true, right? True. And I have so much respect for Mimi for pulling through and just, just you know, just humbling through the journey and just mm. taking all the positives because there is bound to be a lot of challenging things as well, yeah. right? So, uh, man. Mimi, I'm a huge fan of yours. Please stay healthy and stay safe. And hopefully next time you could bring the van here to see today and we could I talk to you live to in the see studio. That. I want to see it. I want to see it. Well, here you go. The stories, see the stories, of course, we'll continue after the break and we'll talk about unique traveling stories. Don't go anywhere. Have City Today Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Today, Today Business. business.
China has been racing against time for rescue and disaster relief work after a landslide on Monday struck a mountainous village in southwest China's Yunnan province. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself, along with my colleagues, will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well, and your latest viral news as well. Hi, hello there. Welcome back to the program, the special segment of See the Ramadan Story. So, guys, how's the interview with uh, our content Bring creators? Bring her here, please. Whoa. With the camper fan, yeah, as well. She is so warm and a very heartwarming experience. I love it. Yeah. yeah, especially uh, she's now in East Nusa Tenggara, right? Yeah, in I'm, I'm, I'm secretly hoping that, that that interview was so inspiring that Hans Lange would consider going camping. <laughs> yeah, I thought you, you, you were going to say, hey, please come to my, uh, to my village, hometown. hometown. To my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time, yeah. By the way, talking about um, everyone who uh, run their dream by doing their passion. For example, this following one, a man from Indonesia recently surprised the public after cycling all the way from Indonesia to Saudi Arabia to perform Umrah. Wow. Wow. So the name, uh, the man named Abdul Rahman Yunis Iswanto, a local from Bandar Lampung, took seven months and three days to cycle through 11 countries to reach Mecca in Saudi Arabia. The 35-year-old departed from Indonesia around September 2023 and arrived in Saudi Arabia on March the 11th. He arrived at the Great Mosque of Mecca two days later. Oh, so perfect, yeah. So his, his, his story, I mean, went viral after it was posted on Instagram account at Portrait Lampung and at Dev Swastika and was appreciated by Indonesians who are also performing Umrah. Abdul Rahman also hopes <coughs> that he can, he can re return to the holy city every year and that his good deeds can be accepted by the Almighty during Ramadan. Wow. That's very beautiful to be able to perform Umrah there after cycling 
in the holy month of Ramadan. Right. We're talking about cycling and not motorcycles. Exactly, right? cycling. Mm. And, and he hopes he, he can do it every year. So if he wants to, uh, he will do that uh, uh, during seven months. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the next five months, maybe you, you, you collect your money and everything, and then the next seven months you do But the do problem that. is, seven months from, uh, from Indonesia to Mecca and Bad. coming back. It's also a long journey. It also right. would be a long journey. Yeah. Like maybe it, it would take like at least uh, seven more months. Maybe he will go back to Indonesia by by plane. By plane. <laughs> All right. Or by ferry. But next, speaking of motorcycles, we do have a couple from Kerinci Regency West Sumatra who travel to the Holy Land again, oh. Mecca, to perform Umrah on a motorcycle. And here's the story. So Ali Mentoria and his wife Morita left for Umrah to Mecca on March 16th, 2024. The journey started from Jambi, Kerinci, and they intended to reach Saudi Arabia by passing through 10 countries. However, due to the Rohingya conflict, their journey was halted in Myanmar as the border was closed. The couple has since decided to return home. So their stunt went viral after their daughter posted about it on Facebook. She also requested her Facebook friends to share and spread the word so that her parents could be monitored during by monitored by many during their journey. Wow, the love of the children. This, I think that's the thing, right? You really do have to understand where you, which countries you need to pass mm. yeah, yeah. in order to complete the journey <clears throat> like uh, the previous story, right? Because uh, you really have to take into account your safety, which means you really have to understand which zones you're going to be yes, crossing. Yes. The visas will also be in question, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's really, really important. But hopefully, uh, if they're going to try again, that they will make it there. Yeah. Hopefully there's a different so route that I'm, doesn't have to take them through Myanmar. I'm thinking if uh, we, we, let's say, we can't pass through Myanmar because of the situation. So mm. what will be the other route? I mean, go to Sri Lanka first? By mm. it could be, but then you'd have to you'd have to finish Southeast Asia first. Yeah, in order for so you to Myanmar be able to the go to the, uh, to all the, the way west. to South Asia, right? Yeah. So South Asia, as in um, the the uh, in going to India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, yeah, 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 yeah. and then going and then all the way there. Turkey and still Middle yes. Eastern countries, or or you could go slightly up and go through the stands. Mm -hmm. The right. Central Asian, the a bit Asian the tour, to a bit the detour, go. but then you have some beauty in the landscape. So it comes, it depends on the goal. But I, I really do believe that brave people do this. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine yeah. it myself. But you know, I, I'd always thought that I'm, I'm such a reader, and uh, it's the adventure in my head. But I don't know <laughs> if I realistically can make it happen for myself. At least. <laughs> okay. But do you have plans for your next vacation yet, mm. or are you yep. experiencing new locations? My rituals for my next vacation just going home to my hometown. <laughs> well, oh, Bandu. Bandu. Oh, okay. Bandu. So here are some unique traveling styles that you can try for the upcoming holidays. Traveling has become easier due to advances from technology and transportation. With the help of the internet, chances of us getting lost are likely low. Traveling has also become a necessity nowadays, and many even earn money from it. Well, and now let's have a look at some unique styles of traveling that might be suitable for you. First up is vacation. This traveling style involves a vacation on a cruise ship. You will be indulged in facilities like a five-star hotel complete with swimming pools and restaurants. Another name for vacation is cruise ship or living on a boat. Glamping is an acronym for glamorous camping. As the name implies, it is not similar to camping activities that we did in a scout, nor associated with traditional camping. Glamping provides resort staff facilities and services while we are staying inside a tent. Despite being modernized in such a way, it is still called camping in nature. Voluntourism was derived from volunteer and tourism. This traveling style involves a charity mission in the itinerary. One of the examples is traveling to an isolated village to volunteer as a teacher in the area. We can also enjoy the local culture and scenery of the designated area. Doom tourism literally means apocalypse. 
This traveling style requires travelers to visit places that are threatened with extinction due to various reasons such as global warming. So, which traveling style that you like to try? Now, that should give you an idea on how to spend your next vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you want to go on a ski? Uh, or are you going to up to the uh, top of the mountain? I'm, I'm trying to think, where in Indonesia can I go skiing? There's no, actually no place you can go to in Carson. Indonesia where you, where you can go to skiing. Go to Papua. So, it's either Australia or Papua? No, it's but only, yeah. not for skiing. Not for but skiing. actually, the closest from Indonesia is that, uh, going to uh, Japan. Australia. Uh, Australia. Australia also oh. has skiing resorts up in the high mountains. All right. So maybe you want to um, contemplate on which country or which place in Indonesia that you want to visit next. Uh, in the meantime, see those stories will continue after the break. So stay with us. Business, your go to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday, right at your lunch hour, as we dive deep into the world of business only on City Today Business. business. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku shooting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Gitu. Apa sih yang <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Harus setuju, saya jadi batu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibie katanya gitu bikin. <laughs> Bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat gitu ya. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Sing Gobang Gosir. Sing Gobang Gosir. Pala botak gak bisa disisir. Pala botak gak bisa <laughs> On the scene of the Ramadan stories now, let's talk about Grand Mosque yeah. in Indonesia with rich historical significance. First off, we have the Baitur Rahman Grand Mosque in Aceh province. You should know about this. Let's have a look. Now, isn't this a sight to behold? Ooh. Situated in the heart of Banda Aceh, Aceh province, the Baitur Rahman Grand Mosque stands as an iconic testament to the region's rich cultural heritage and resilience in the face of adversity. Established in the 17th century under the rule of Sultan Iskandar Muda, the mosque has undergone numerous renovations and rebuilds over the centuries, blending traditional Achaeans architectural elements with Islamic influences. However, its most profound moment came during the catastrophic 2004 earthquake and tsunami. Despite the widespread destruction that ravaged the area, the Baitur Rahman Mosque remained steadfast, emerging as a beacon of hope and strength for the Achehnese people. Its distinctive black, black domes and towering minarets adorned with intricate carvings and ornate decorations continue to draw visitors and worshippers alike. 
offering a poignant reminder of in the enduring spirit and cultural significance of Aceh. Yes, I went there in 2005, mm. and it, it is a really um, landmark landscape for mm. Aceh, and yeah? And today, the Baitul Rahman Grand Mosque not only serves as a place of prayer and reflection for Muslims, but also as a symbol of resilience, unity, and the enduring power of faith amid the challenges of the modern world. So beautiful. Yeah. Yep. I mean, during the tsunami, the earthquake, it stood there, you know, almost unharmed. The main structure. Mm, mm, the main structure, yes. So uh, it's just, it's just beautiful. Mm. I, it's actually it's on my list to visit. I haven't yet. You haven't gone there. No, yeah, I haven't. Yeah. I really uh, want to. The way I have island. a list. The Wet Island is so beautiful. I have yeah. a list of the things that I want to eat, I want to go <laughs> yeah. to. Uh, like the, the original the version of Ayam Tangkap. Oh, Ayam Tangkap. I love it. And not to mention the Mi Goreng Aceh, the, yeah. the, oh, the yes. curry taste. Yeah. Yes. It's very... Different curry taste. It's a different curry -ish kind as the West Sumatran and yeah. Malay, right? Yep. So yep. this is very Middle Eastern-esque, actually. So the curry there is uh, a little bit, um, oh, what you call it, diluted when it comes comes to yeah. um, uh, the, the, the curry. And also, they have a very rich coffee culture. Ah, That's it. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yes. So I don't really drink coffee during Ramadan time, so it's definitely going to be post-Ramadan. <laughs> and I'm busy With the durian now. roti chana, you know. Oh, oh yeah. We just stop there. <laughs> Wait, you can eat. You're it's fasting. Akira and I that are still fasting. <laughs> All right, we're still talking about uh, Grand Mosque, and now we're going to Turkey. Uh, there lies a mosque and cultural historical site that was formerly built as a church. You already know about this, known as the Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque. This is also a place that I have to visit. Mm. Yeah. It's the Hagia Sophia, which is a mosque and an iconic building that is the most popular landmark in Istanbul, Turkey. Besides having a unique architecture, the Hagia Sophia building also has a long history. It was originally built as a church for Christians, but was converted into a mosque during the Ottoman Caliphate in 1453. The building was also transformed into a museum in 1934. So Hagia Sophia was designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1985 as part of Istanbul's history district. Beautiful. The building is said to have high historical value and a unique masterpiece of architecture as a blend of the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan transformed the Hagia Sophia back into a mosque in 2020. Oh, you've been there, right? I went there last I mean, year. How beautiful is it from the inside? Uh, so, um, because uh, the, the, the building itself is like very big. And also you can see uh, the remains of Christianity or the, or the church mm -hmm. inside the building. Even uh, when you go into the, uh, the gate of, not the gate, uh, the, uh, the entrance, the entrance. Of, of the mosque itself, not the complex, but the mosque, you can actually see um, the, the fainting um, uh, painting uh, uh, which depicts uh, uh, Mother Mary and Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so the, the, the painting is still there. Yeah, the painting yeah. is still there. The painting is, is uh, um, fainting, although it's fainting and uh, a little bit vague. But you can see that that's actually the painting of Mother Mary and, and Jesus Christ. And going inside, because the ceiling is so high, you can feel uh, the majestic feeling, mm. the majestic vibe of the higher city. So the, the air feels different inside. Right? Oh, like the air feels dome. different inside. Wow. It's, it's like so a thousand thousand years of air. Yeah, and also, oh, but uh, uh, all the uh, uh, all, all the lights and the the, the uh, what you call chandelier? it? The chandelier uh, was actually quite low, oh. so you can you can find uh, the chandelier probably just one meter above your head. Oh. Ah. So they, they made it. One up. meter above your head? That's dangerous. Yeah. Well, or, or two meters, probably. Okay. <laughs> Hope so, because, you know, like, if you're, you'd be like 190 something into my. Oh, true. That's actually true. <laughs> well, we'll be back with your daily dose of entertainment on the last segment of the show. Of course, you don't want to miss that. Stay tuned.
Say Today Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on Say Today, Today Business. business. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Ini tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate in New York. Ini adalah open debate Dewan Keamanan PBB ketiga mengenai Gaza dalam tiga bulan terakhir dan Indonesia hadir di ketiganya. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Perlombaan ini seperti mendaki Everest tiga kali. Apa sih yang dicari? <laughs> Bini setuju aja. Orang setuju, saya jadi badu. Siapa sih yang ngajarin kamu sekuat ini? Ada Pak Habibi katanya gitu bikin. <laughs> Bikin pesawat. Bikin pesawat <laughs> gitu. Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. Abra kadabra. Abra kadabra. Singgo Banggosir. Singgo Banggosir. Pala botak yang bisa disisir. Pala botak yang bisa <laughs> Now, welcome back to this very new show and see today. And it's time for our daily dose of entertainment, of course. And let's start with a movie called Keluar Main 1994. Or let's go out and play 1994 that is released in cinemas today. Wow. So directed by Ihdar Nur and written by Elfin Miradi, the movie stars Arif Bata, Ari Kriting, Oki Mabone, Adi Surya, and Brian Onardo. This movie brings back the nuances of the 90s that are ready to make the millennial generation feel nostalgic. I think uh, some Including of the scenes... School I did it, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> because I think this is uh, uh, this was uh, our era, yeah? Our era, right? yeah. So the comedy highlights the life of a high school student named Ibo, who has a big dream to be to become a professional football player, but does not uh, have the full support of his parents. Ibo also has three close friends with very different characteristics, and in this movie, they all have fun together with many adventures. Oh, the adventures of high school. Yeah. Oh, Arif Bata is so funny. You yeah. can go to his TikTok account and laugh yourself out. All right, so the next one. China recently debuted its first Corgi. <gasps> Wait. Am I hearing it right? Corgi as a police dog, dog. on March the 27th. Oh, look at it! I love Corgis. Yeah. Now, I know Ahir must have have, you must have a secret obsession with Corgis because of the Yes, the lit. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II, right? Now, this is a six month old corgi dog named Futai. Made its debut as a police dog during the opening of a police camp in Weifang, Shandong province. And Futai trains every morning and afternoon as a reserve police dog. And his training includes obedience, bomb searching or no, and bomb sniffing techniques. Can you imagine a corgi? It's not very agile. Bomb? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Wow, despite its stereotypes as a short black dog with an adorable face, yes. Fu Tsai has, has passed four months of training and often takes advantage of its short legs to search in limited spaces such as underneath cars. Yeah. That's smart. The yeah. corgi can fit underneath cars and, you know, while the German Shepherds are usually much taller. Right? Yeah, yeah, bigger. With, with long legs. With longer and legs. Look <laughs> Look at the adorable face of Fu Tai. Right? It's, it's also, such a great PR move as well. <laughs> yeah, and people Futai, will love. Ma'am, can you can imagine Fu Tai with a with a corgi butt? Yeah, uh, I just saw a corgi butt bombs. last night. I'm yeah. satisfied. And still wiggling, wiggling. Still yeah. wiggling. It's the way they walk is like. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cute. All right, so Fu Tai will actually close our show for today. 
uh, the today's episode of the three hour news yeah. show on yeah. C today. Be sure to also follow us on our socials. We are on Instagram, X, and YouTube channel at C Today News. And as you know, C Today can now also be enjoyed on Australia on Fox's OTT platform, Flash Up, or in Macau on cable TV channel 84. And if you are in the Philippines, you can also watch the Converge Vision channel 58. Of course, in Singapore, we're available on Singtel Singapore channel 50. Yes. And you know what? I'm thinking to call our CGTN friends to cover more story about Fuchai, you know? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> please. Uh, okay, meanwhile for you, Telcom Cell users, you can also watch C today on the Maxstream apps. Don't forget to also tune in again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And be sure to also catch our morning show every day at 6 a.m. My name is Muhammad Ahim. My name is Kai Surya. And I'm Hans Lango. We'd like to say, see Indonesia, see, Indonesia, see, see the world, world see, see today. Bye-bye. Happy long you. weekend! <laughs>